Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Tecundra Swap. Hopefully you're not getting too frustrated with me because I'm dragging this out, but I'm not doing it on purpose. I'm doing a lot of stuff with the channel right now. I got a lot of other stuff going on. Check out the other videos. They're all good, I swear. Today I took the time to do a little more research and I want to show you guys what I come up with. A lot of people were talking about inertia switch, which is uh, pretty much exactly what I was thinking of. Although I did some research, I can't find an actual switch, so to speak. It's not like an, an old school type of switch that would have a button to reset it or something like that, of course. What I did find is a thing called a circuit opening relay. A lot of you are here for the learning experience, so I do want to show you what I found on the computer. This system I'm using is called Pro Demand. This will show us anything we need to know about the truck, pretty much. And uh, it even does troubleshooting guides and stuff like that. It's Mitchell Pro Demand. I shouldn't quote a price, but I mean, we pay for it monthly to have it. Okay, I already got this punched in uh, up here. You see, I got 2007 Toyota Tundra 5.7 liter. And the first thing I actually looked up was the inertia switch. I didn't really come up with anything. I went over here to component location and this is complete. They're showing you everything except the fuel lines themselves. Uh, but what I see here is, you know, you got a regulator. Of course, the ECM's part of this, fuel injectors. You got a fuel cap. There is a fuel pump ECU that one of my commenters mentioned, and that really surprised me. I had no idea until I read his comment. So I want to thank him uh, specifically for that. I think his name was Speedbro. Thank you. Uh, of course, there's your fuel tank, and then the suction hoses, the pump, uh, center unit. And down here, this is the, the portion that I'm really concerned with, actually. Up in the engine bay, this is part of the fuse box, and this is where the fuel pump relay is going to be. And there's another thing here they list called a circuit opening relay. This is actually the thing that would function as an inertia switch, kind of. Uh, this is going to do the shutoff, the physical shutting off of the fuel pump. Uh, and it gets a signal from the ECU, though. So the ECU tells this to shut down if there's a problem. And I'm pretty sure this is what it's going to be. And that brings me to my next diagram that I'm going to show you. This shows us all the pins on this relay and what they do. This is really nice to have because I'm going to use this to jump power across between these two. Five and three down here, this is what actually connects to get the power to the fuel pump then. Well, actually it's got to go to the fuel pump ECU. This is what powers it up. And I think this is where a problem is. I think this little guy's being told to not let it run. So I'm planning to jump power across this and see if that starts a truck. That's the first thing I'm gonna do when I go to the garage because I think I've got it narrowed down to this. If it's something else, I'll move on to the next step. But this is just the first thing I'm gonna try because I think it's gonna work. I can also show you the wiring diagrams. There's actually seven pages of this stuff and I'm pretty familiar with using these and I'm going to click on this one. This is page seven. And this is the one where it gets into the uh, fuel pump and the relay and everything. I'm going to zoom in on it here for you. Okay. So this is just the top right corner of this diagram. And right here we have our fuel pump relay over here is the circuit opening relay. And you see these are side by side and they're directly connected. The fuel pump relay actually gets power first. It then pushes power from its switch right here. It pushes power through this black wire over to here. But then this circuit opening relay has another switch in it. And that is the one that I'm assuming is open right now. But from there, we get power over to here. This is our fuel pump ECU that I can't believe is actually part of this system, but it does have a fuel pump control ECU. It's mounted back on the frame. That has to get power from this. And at that point, it uh, these two wires are some sort of uh, controllers from the ECU. It looks to me like this fuel pump actually maybe gets uh, like a varying current, like, um, you know, like maybe it only gets a certain amount of voltage or whatever to slow it down at idle and then it gets full power when you're under load or whatever. That's the only thing I can figure because from, from this ECU, the only thing that happens then is you get two wires going to the to the fuel pump. So it's from here, it's, you know, a pretty simple system. This is what I'm familiar with. Uh, you get a power and a ground and this is our fuel pump here. So, you know, from here, this looks pretty simple. Of course, we could just power these wires up, but I really think if I just jump across these connectors, this thing's going to start. So I just wanted to show you guys how I came to my conclusions that this is going to work. Uh, of course, if it doesn't, I guess I'll slap myself in the face and 
we'll go try some of these other ideas. But this is a pretty educated guess that I'm making right now. It still doesn't exactly answer why this is open. I would guess it's because of the airbags being blown. I think probably a certain amount of bags that blow, this thing's gonna pop open and I don't think it's gonna close unless I really reset the airbag sensors or whatever. And that's a step that I don't feel that I need to take if I can just jump this. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I hope this works and I can move on to the next step and stop listening to you guys nag me about this truck, come on. I'm just kidding. I actually really appreciate all the comments and uh, all the suggestions too. I really actually read through every last one of them and I took them all into consideration. I should also mention, I had a lot of people commenting that said, you know, there probably is water in the tank and stuff like that. I totally agree, but I also had a few people comment and say, hey, I own a Tundra and I can tell you when you turn that key on, the fuel pump gets power right away and you can hear it. You know, if you, if you get your ear close, you can hear it. I know I can't hear it in, in mine, so that's why I'm going directly to powering that fuel pump up. All right, guys, we're out here at the truck now, uh, taking a look at this fuse box. This is the way the diagram looks at the fuse box. So this is actually the fuel pump relay, and then this one is the circuit open relay. I'll just start with this one since I think that's where the problem is. Let's just pop this one out and check it first. Okay, so this is our fused power. It is getting power. And then if that uh, relay is kicking on, it would put power out to this, which powers up our fuel pump ECU, which should power up our fuel pump. So what I'm gonna do is just jump straight across this and see if that'll make it start. Just put a piece of wire right in here. By jumping them, I'm bypassing this little guy. And as long as everything else is working, it should start now. See if we can get a sample out of the fuel. Oh, nice. Hit it again. Hit it, let it run for a second. That seems it's not running. It kicks. I could bump the starter. Do it. That's pushing it out. That's good, that's good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It cranks on its own. Even after you leave off the key, you know what I mean? That looks like solid fuel to me. Yeah, I don't see any separation. Well, unless that's solid water. Ooh, you know how we can find out? I got a lighter. The old lighter test. Yeah, the old lighter, lighter test. Lighter and explosives. Whiplash style, let's do it. Outside though. Let me smell it, how strong is it? Yeah, I mean, it smells like Ooh, gas to me. gas I mean it doesn't smell old so much this is how a lot of videos end you know like with the dumbass dumping gas on fire all right put it out before the fire comes out. well hopefully no one calls DEP on us for that mess whoo I'd be in big trouble well, what could be wrong Still doesn't want to start. Huh. Man, I hate to drag this out a whole nother episode. That should at least be enough to give us a code and the check engine light's staying on so I think we're gonna run and grab the scan tool see what it says Maybe oh, I can see glass this. in my hair Shake it Ooh, out. glass in my knuckles glass all over the place all right boys we're using a maxi DOS DS 808 just like the Beastie Boys used to use Okay, really, there's only two current ones. We got a P1343 and a P0340. I'm gonna go back in the house, jump on Pro Demand again. All right, guys, in the house now. I already did the math on Pro Demand. 
turns out that these are both cam position sensors. However, one of them is actually a VVT sensor that still reads cam position. There's five total cam position sensors. Four of those are VVT sensors for variable valve timing. P0340 is a VVT sensor, one of the four VVT sensors. This one reads off of the bank one intake cam. And then P1343 is the main cam timing sensor and it reads cam timing before VVT affects it. So it's reading like the true cam timing if you had no VVT. 1343 is the main cam sensor that looks for differences between cam and crank. Since we're having problems with both of them, I tried to look at the similarities between the two and there are some similarities in wiring diagram. Uh, they both get a five volt reference from the same pin out of the ECU. So that's the first thing I'm gonna check, but I didn't wanna waste your time looking at all this stuff. So let's get back out to the garage and hopefully figure this out. Moments later. We erased the check engine light, turned the key back on, rescanned it without even cranking the engine and the check engine codes, both of them come back up right away. So I pretty much know it's a connection issue. It's not a problem with the engine itself. It didn't skip timing or anything like that. We checked power, we got five volts to each sensor, so we know that's good. But I come over here to the ECU plug and started looking at this. We started checking connections from the ECU plug here over to here. And the first one we checked was good, but then we found that the next one wasn't and I started filling around with this, turns out, some of these wires are bad. Look at these things coming out here. So from the hit that this thing took, it's knocking some of these wires loose. This is a good example of why I want to get it running in this truck first. A uh, problem like that would be really hard to figure out in the Tacoma because I'd be looking at all the work I did, not at something like this. So at least now I know what's going on with it. I'm feeling pretty confident now that everything else is good. And I might just go ahead and pull it out now. I don't think I necessarily have to see it run in the truck now. This pretty much narrows it down. I know what I'm working with. I think I'm gonna need a whole new harness though, and that might be hard to find. Maybe I can ask you guys again, who's got a harness for me? I don't really know. Usually no one's gonna to wanna to part a harness out from a good engine, so maybe someone has a core engine or something. Uh, if anyone knows of anything, let me know. I wanna thank everyone for joining me today, and don't forget to hit the like button if you like what you see, or even if you don't, just hit it anyway to help me out. And if you can come up with anything to say at all, leave me a comment. If you want make fun of my hair i actually like those comments a lot i'll get back to you as soon as i can on this swap but i do have a lot of other things going on if you haven't watched any of my other videos please go watch them they're actually way better than this you know these videos are just more tutorial for doing the swap thanks a lot guys and i'll see you next time